With your CIG TV News Brief, Community News and Weather Forecast, I'm Donna Bush. We begin with our continued features segment of another 2020 Proud of Them recipient, Arnold Berry. I attended Clifton Hunter High School and I studied math, physics, geography, human and social biology and integrated science. You know, from, from an early age, I always stress to all my kids, you know, um, you have to excel, you have to do well. And he always did, you know. Um, I, oh, in fact, when Arnie, uh, he's Arnie to me, when he attended preschool, you know, he was selected at that early age to give the valedictorian speech. And my poor little Tweety Pie just stood there. He recited it as if it was so normal. I mean, the whole church erupted. I'm currently studying at St. Ignatius Catholic School in their sixth form program. And I'm currently studying math, physics, computer science, and geography. At my current school, I am a STEM mentor. So I help mentor students in math and physics. I've been a friend of the family for as long as I could remember, about 14, 15 years. And he was always a curious child, always asking questions about things he didn't know about. So I recognized that there's something special about him. And at that age, he was even fascinated with airplanes and anything technical. So if there's a problem, he'd always come, Mr. Runcy, what does this do? And what does this do? I think my most outstanding academic achievements were when I got my results back from CXC, where I had nine grade ones in 11 of my subjects. I'm sure you would agree with me that a people is the greatest asset of any country. And when I think of Arnold Berry, I think of a youth who is indeed an asset to the Cayman Islands. This is a young man who wants to be a civil engineer, who has the ambition to open his own business. So if we are talking about an award that places high premium on efficiency, and community involvement on the shoulder of its young people, then I have no reservation in recommending Arnold, who is indeed an asset to the Cayman Islands. To be selected as a Proud of Them honoree is a big honor. I, I feel so because it's 12 of the best young people who performed within the last year's period of time, and I really am honored to be a part of it. And you'll notice the 12 Proud of Them honorees are featured on billboards across the Cayman Islands. Tomorrow, we'll meet Mr. Stefan Wright. Well, as we've been reporting, the Honorable Premier Alden McLaughlin is in New York for the 7th Annual Cayman Finance New York Breakfast Briefing. The Premier has delivered remarks promoting the Cayman Islands as a reliable and stable jurisdiction in which to do business. To provide some perspective, between 2013 and 2018, the Cayman Islands economy has grown at an average rate of 3% per year in real terms. The last two years have been exceptionally good with GDP growth of 3.4% in 2018 coming in stronger than the estimated growth in many of the world's more advanced economies. And when the final numbers are in, we anticipate that last year we'll see growth at again around about three percent. The delegation attended the second Cayman Finance New York Reinsurance Roundtable with more than 600 captive insurance and reinsurance companies and several large reinsurance companies domiciled here in the Cayman Islands. The Premier's delegation includes His Excellency Governor Martin Roper and Minister for Financial Services the Honorable Tara Rivers who we heard from on Tuesday as well as Attorney General the uh, Honorable uh, Sam Bulgin and a team from the Cayman Islands Monetary Authority as well as others. Well, finally, Minister of Commerce, Planning and Infrastructure, the Honorable Joseph Hugh, is in Jamaica taking part in the fourth annual Caribbean Infrastructure Forum being held in Kingston, Jamaica. The forum brings together the region's public sector utilities, financiers and project investors to map out the region's infrastructure needs, foster new relationships and introduce Caribbean projects to international sources of expertise and financing. 
Minister Hugh took part in various panel discussions with other leading voices in the region to address the topic, Walking the Walk, Adoption of Sustainable Energy to Power Island Governments. He also made remarks on behalf of Premier McLaughlin, who is in New York, as mentioned earlier. The event is organized by Energy Events and ID, IGD Global, uh, the in infrastructure arm of Euromoney Institutional Investor. Well, Clifton Hunter, a high school careers advisor, Christine Campbell says getting college ready is a focus for some high school students across the islands as they take part in college week activities this week. Basically, our mission here is to get our students college ready. Right? We want them to start thinking about what their options are when they leave us. and We want them to also think about what possibilities are available to them as it relates to the careers of interest, what academic pathways they will need to pursue. We want them to consider their options from early. As part of College Week activities, high school students enrolled at public and private schools throughout the Cayman Islands will have the chance to interact with local and overseas college recruiters. There will be a series of college fairs and an information session for parents of prospective students. The goal of the fairs is to inspire young people, some of whom may not have previously thought about college, to consider tertiary studies as an option. The series of college fairs will take place at the Cayman Academy, Clifton Hunter High School and the South Sound Community Center. Now for a check on other community stories making Radio Cayman headlines today. The Cayman Islands Fire Service says residents, business owners and visitors to the Cayman Islands should get out, stay out and dial 911 rather than trying to extinguish fires by themselves. This after fire officers were called to a well-developed uh, tree and hedge fire near the old Hyatt building recently. Uh, CIFS officers would only recommend tackling a small undeveloped fire where uh, safe to do when safe to do so with an appropriate fire extinguisher to prevent further ex escalation and of course calling 911 to report the fire as a ma matter of urgency. Now tackling larger fires they say with no training the wrong equipment for wrong extinguishing agent or wrong extinguishing agent rather can lead to serious injuries or a fire related fatality and should be avoided in the interest of public safety. And of course, for more on other uh, Radio Cayman stories, you can go online to radiocayman.gov.ky. Of course, turning now to today's weather forecast from the Cayman Islands National Weather Service. Moderate to fresh northeasterly winds and rough seas are expected over the Cayman Islands area for the next 24 hours. It's all in association with a high pressure system over the southeast United States. Today's high temperature reached 83 degrees with partly cloudy skies with a less than 20% chance of showers. Winds are from the north to northeast, 15 to 20 knots. Sea conditions are rough with wave heights of 5 to 7 feet. A small craft warning is still in effect and continued swells are expected along the west and north coast. And of course, remember, you can go online to weather.gov.ky for the very latest. Uh, you can also get the National Weather Services app, CINWS, where you can also find weather information for boaters as well as to, uh, those who are traveling. All right, well, that's the latest from us here at CIG Television. If you missed today's news brief, you can go online to the Cayman Islands Government Facebook page as well as the CIG Television YouTube channel. I'm Donna Bush, wishing you a safe night. Bye-bye for now. Join Donna Bush weekdays at 6 p.m. for the CIG TV News Update. Get the latest on what's happening in government on a daily basis. News Update first at 6 p.m. I'm Jody Ann Powery, I'm the Police Media Officer with the RCIPS and I'm here to give you some crime prevention tips on how to best protect your property. The first thing that we want to discuss is our points of entries. Um, let's start with the front door and then we'll move on to the windows and the back doors or sliding glass doors. The first thing to consider is the front door. This particular front door has two deadbolt locks. One of these deadbolt locks are properly carpentered and the other is not. When your door is properly locked, you'll hear a click at the end and the deadbolts are not able to move. If it is slightly open, then you can push the deadbolt back without having any 
restrictions. I'll now proceed to show you what your lock should look like when it is properly locked. When it comes to your windows, you want to make sure that your window is locked all the way down. Because even though the lock is on, if it's not all the way down, it can still be fried. The proper way to lock the window is to make sure that the window goes all the way down to the seal and then you pull across the lock. When you have a sliding glass door at home, you want to make sure that you have secondary locking devices in addition to the lock that comes with the door. One of those can be a simple piece of wood that's jamming the doorway. We want to encourage you to ensure that you don't make things easy for burglars who are looking for opportunities to break into property by leaving your property out in plain view. Some of these items are your car keys, your electronics and your handbags. Make sure that you put these properties away when you're leaving the house or when you're going to bed. When you're going camping or if you're taking your family on a trip, you want to ensure that your property has some sign of life. This can be done by leaving a light on or putting timers on your lights. And we want to ensure that our family homes are safe. In order to do so, we encourage that people take the proper precautions by starting up neighborhood watches or encouraging family members or persons they trust to check on their properties while they're away. The Esterly Tibbetts Highway 3-lane roundabout is ready for drivers. It's time to make sure you know how to use it. First, know which exit you need to take. Pay attention to lane arrows and signs. Make sure you use your signal to change lanes or exit the roundabout. To turn left, you always approach in the left-hand lane and indicate left. To drive straight ahead, you need to be looking out for signs and road markings indicating which lane to use. Get in one of the lanes marked with a straight-through arrow. If turning right, you must use the right-hand lane and indicate accordingly. To use the roundabout safely, remember these three tips. Know your exit, pick your lane, and signal to make your turn. The Royal Cayman Islands Police Service has launched a new service to apply for a police clearance certificate online. To make this process quick and easy, ensure you have digital copies of all required documents readily available. At a minimum, you'll need a copy of your passport photo page. Our website lists the full requirements. If you are using an Apple iOS or Android mobile device, you can use the camera to take photos of these documents while completing your application. After you have read the instructions and are ready to start, type in the alphanumeric string from the CAPTCHA image and click the green button that says Start Application. If you can't read the letters and numbers properly, click Can't Read Image below the photo to try again. To complete your application, you will follow five simple steps. These are shown at the top of each page, and the blue circle will always show where you are right now. Enter the requested data in each field. All fields marked with an asterisk are required. Each field has some help information, and please pay attention to the correct format for dates and telephone numbers in particular. When selecting your birthday, you can also use the calendar feature. If a field has a drop-down list, you can scroll through alphabetically or start typing to find the correct option. You will be asked to enter your email address twice to ensure it's correct. This is the address we will use to send you a confirmation email and receipt. Once you have entered all of the required information, click Next at the bottom of the screen. If you click the Cancel Application button at any stage in the process, you will lose everything you've entered so far and be returned to the home page. On this page, answer the questions about past offenses, provide details if relevant, and then click Next. In this step, 
you will select the type of service being requested and details of the person applying, as well as anyone who might pick up the certificate on his or her behalf. If you select certain options, more information may be required at this stage or later in the process when you are uploading your documents. Finally, select the reasons you are applying and then click Next. If you make a mistake, use the drop-down menu to change the reason or click the red X to delete a line. Remember, if you click the Cancel Application button at any stage in the process, you will lose everything you've entered so far and be returned to the home page. If you need to go back to a previous page to review or change data you already entered, you can use the Back button. You can also navigate through the process using the links at the top of the page. On this page, you will be asked for the relevant digital documents to support your application. On each line, click the Upload icon, select the correct file, and then click Upload. Repeat this process for each document. Based on the information you've already entered, this page will tell you the basic documents required. However, please remember to read the guidance notes to ensure you've included everything for your particular application. You can click the Upload More Documents button if you need to add more files, using the Comments field to briefly explain the additional documents you are submitting. If you go back to previous sections after uploading documents and make changes that affect these requirements, you may need to re-upload your documents. This is the final page before submission. Please review all information provided to ensure it is accurate and complete. You won't be able to change anything on this page, but you can use the back button or the links at the top of the page to return to earlier pages and update any field. By submitting this application, you are declaring that the information provided is accurate and truthful. If you are satisfied with your application, click Proceed to Online Payment. You may need to allow pop-ups and then click the button again to show the payment screen where you will enter your debit or credit card information. The Cayman Islands government accepts Visa and MasterCard and you can use a debit or credit card issued anywhere in the world. Payment will be processed in Cayman Islands dollars for local service and in United States dollars for overseas service. If you have questions about any exchange rate that will be used or foreign currency transaction fees, please contact the bank that issued your card. The Cayman Islands government will not receive or retain your card information. Once your online payment has been authorized, you can view and print your receipt. Click Continue to return to our webpage for details on pickup date and time. If there is an issue with your application and we have to contact you for more information, your application may be delayed. You will also receive a confirmation email with this information and your official receipt. Please remember to bring your passport for identification when you collect your certificate from the Criminal Records Office. Did you know that planning permission is required for a shed? Did you know you should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required? Did you know that walls, fences located along the road require planning permission no matter the height? You should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required. Did you know that planning permission is required for an addition, alteration, or any material change to your house? The 10% rule no longer exists. Did you know you should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required? Did you know your mailing address details on your land register must be up to date in order to receive notices on new development which may impact you? Visit Lands and Survey Department to check your mailing address is correct. Join Donna Bush weekdays at 6 p.m. for the CIG TV News Update. Get the latest on what's happening in government on a daily basis. 
news update first at 6 p.m.